Welcome class to our new audio podcast. I'm your host and professor Alex Gomez. In this unit, we are covering the first wave of Anglo-Americans into Texas. Before Anglo settlers came into Texas, let's go back to early 1800s. The U.S. had already established its independence from England, and Mexico and the rest of Latin America wanted to do the same with Spain. After a long decade of fighting against Spain, Mexico wins its independence in 1821. At that time, Mexico covered an area from Central America northward to California, Utah, and Texas. So that was a huge chunk of land. Many parts of Mexico were desolate and sparsely populated. These northern areas were hard to defend against both Indian excursions and Anglo land poaching. So if we go back a little bit to 1803, the U.S. had acquired Louisiana from the French and they were moving west, closer to Mexico. Obviously, Mexico was a bit worried of Anglo-American expansion and Mexico thought that by letting Anglo-Americans, especially Catholics, to help populate their northern frontier closer to Texas was going to be a good idea to deter the rest of the Americans hungry from land. Mexico at that time had a hard time also fighting against the Comanches and Apaches. And they thought that by having Americans, that was going to be an amazing help. The American who came into the negotiations to settle in Texas was Moses Austin. He was broke, and he thought that settling in Mexico would change his fate. And it did. In 1820, he traveled to San Antonio to request a land grant from the Spanish governor, who initially turned him down. Austin persisted and was finally granted permission to settle with 300 families, and he was given 200,000 acres to settle in Texas. Austin immediately set out for the U.S. to begin recruiting colonists, but unfortunately he became ill and died. Then his son, Stephen Austin, continued to follow his father's dream and began over the next decade to bring nearly 25,000 Anglo colonizers into Texas, most of them Protestant. And this is really important because the idea was to bring American Catholics into Texas because Mexicanos thought that the Catholics would be more loyal to the Mexicanos. Let's not forget the concept of Hispanophobia and how Protestants and Catholics fought against each other in Europe during the Reformation. Since then, Americans had preconceived ideas about the corruption of the Catholic Church. Most who came into the American colonies to practice their Protestant religion, view themselves as WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. This group has long dominated American society, culture, and the leadership of major political parties. Even the Irish and German Catholics had a hard time settling in the U.S. during the 1800s. Aside from religion, the skin color played a huge role in the clash of these two cultures in Texas. The Anglo-Americans were convinced that dark-skinned people were racially and culturally inferior. Many Anglos at that time in Texas saw Tejanos as lazy, un-Americans, and subhuman. Arnoldo de Leon, who wrote a classic book titled The Golden Greasers, analyzes the racial attitudes by white Americans toward peoples of Mexican descent in Texas from 1821 all the way up to 1900s. However, the Tejanos, who were Mexicanos at the time, had more ties with the U.S. than Mexico, and that is because their close proximity with Anglo-Americans. And vice versa, Americans, they felt that they had more loyalty towards the U.S. than Mexico. Texians, as they called themselves, started to resent the changes made by the new government of Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. 
decentralized power, changing the constitution of 1824, which allowed the Texans great freedom to rule themselves. Mexico then implemented harsh sanctions against Texas. Mexico closed its borders and banned slavery. Austin had to go to Mexico to negotiate all these changes, but instead he was arrested. From this point on, war was inevitable. And that's something that we are going to see in the next unit. And that's all for today, and I'm looking forward to the next.